I'd like to call to order this committee the whole meeting of the Town of Saugeen Shores, and I extend a welcome to everyone in the council chambers this evening. Uh, the first order of business is a declaration of pecuniary interest, and I'll remind every member of your responsibility to declare if you have one. Councilor Legault. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to uh, declare on item number two on deputations, as well as uh, the uh, planning 4.4 on both items. Okay. Thank you. So noted. Nothing further than uh, this evening, we have two deputations, and the first is uh, John Cherry and Tony Porter, and they're here about, uh, they're a fundraising committee, and they're here about a, to bring us an update on a great project that's going on in their community. So welcome, Tony and, and John. Sorry about that. Um, Mayor Smith and members of town council, good evening. Um, several months ago, our fundraising committee uh, came before you uh, to briefly outline our construction project uh, for the addition to an existing office and service location here in Soggy and Shores, Port Elgin. At that time, we spoke of our needs for financial assistance to help our, our project. We asked for your help, and we were overjoyed to be advised that town council had approved not only a cash infusion of $10,000, but also an additional amount of $20,000 in kind to assist us with permitting and other developmental fees. Uh, these amounts have gone a long way towards helping us reach our final goal, and as of this evening, I can confirm that our committee has raised $252,317.50 of our final goal of $300,000. Um, that's allowed the addition of approximately 1,100 square feet uh, to the current existing facility, which is on uh, 21 Highway, uh, just next to the Rexdale. I'm sure many of you see the construction underway, uh, which in in includes uh, revised access ramps and a rear deck, updated wheelchair access uh, to uh, two washrooms, a large new kitchen facility completely outfitted with entirely new appliances, uh, several additional meeting rooms, uh, have been added, and uh, the dramatic change to the facade of the building will be apparent to you, all of you as you drive by. Um, these changes are going to allow the community staff to continue to bring a high level of dedicated care and instruction to the more than 75 self-advocates that we presently serve. Uh, we're pleased to confirm that uh, presently we are on budget and, and on time, with early completion expected to be in late July 2014. It's not often in any project. All of us in business know that you don't often get on time and on budget, uh, and we're hoping to be a little under budget. And on behalf of our committee, which includes uh, Tony Portier and Gary Dale, uh, David Elliott, Ann Voss, Ross Brooks, Nicole Hatton, and myself, as well as the staff and self-advocates of community living, we'd like to thank you very much. Thank you very much, John. I, I, uh, I'm going to ask the committee if they have any comments or questions. Uh, if not, I, I, we do have the check here for you tonight, and we'll, we'll, we'll present it here shortly. <laughs> um, but I, I uh, and I say this always that when I get this opportunity for the for the group of people that work with community living, that uh, the work that you do makes a big uh, difference in people's lives, and we thank you for that work uh, in our community. Well, it's just a chance to give back. Okay. If you want to come up, maybe we could probably get a picture of this check, and it might help your fundraising. Sure. <laughs> Okay. 
Next deputation is Donald Beback, and he's here about a site plan for the Harvey Swiss Chalet. Welcome, Donald. Mr. Mayor, members of committee, good evening and thank you very much. My name is Don Beback, and I am the owner of the Dollar Tree uh, Plaza. With me tonight is also Mr. Uh, Jeff Dale. Um, we've worked diligently with staff over the last many months, and um, I just really want to indicate our acceptance of the staff report. We hope we can move forward and get the shovel in the ground as soon as possible. We're here to answer any questions that you have them. Otherwise, uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Donald. Then I'll uh, go to committee. Any questions for Mr. Buyback? Sorry about that. That's okay. No problem. <laughs> I'm called lots of things. <laughs> Vice Deputy Regala. <clears throat> Just a comment, uh, I, I really, uh, I, I got a chance to look at your site plan and, uh, and your landscaping plan and it, it looks good. It will be a tremendous improvement over the, the asphalt that's there now and I look forward to seeing it as, as it lays out. So, uh, way to go and uh, way to go to staff for uh, putting that together. Thanks guys. Any further? That was very short and thank you Mr. Bye -bye. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, the next item on the agenda is a uh, general government staff report that has to do with the Port Elgin BIA street furniture and I believe our CAO will present the report. Thank you Mr. Mayor. Uh, the Port Elgin BIA recently purchased and began placement of new street furniture in the downtown core. The project was funded through a Spruce the Bruce program grant. Staff has met with representatives of the BIA to gain a better understanding of the plan and received their formal request for street furniture placement in late June. The request was circulated internally for comment, reviewed in the context of our existing patio policy and commented on by staff on behalf of the Accessibility Committee. The particulars of the benches is contained in the report um, that's, in the, uh, that's included with your agenda. It's noted that the uh, bench units will be placed against number of businesses as well as within Coulter Park Ave and Green Street. The BIA representatives indicate the chairs will be secured and they will investigate different options as to how this will be achieved. They are intended to remain in place until after Pumpkin Fest weekend, after which the BIA will be responsible for their removal and storage. Through the circulation internally, a concern was expressed regarding the encroachment of each unit as it will infringe on existing sidewalk space, which is limited in some areas. The BIA has responded by indicating they will be able to maintain at least a two meter minimum travel area around each. Accessibility Committee reviewed the request at their meeting held last week. Their comments, uh, the comments received related to their desire to have been consulted prior to the purchase, the positioning of the bench is a sufficient distance from corners, and the desire that the bench seats be as horizontal as possible, the height of the underside of the umbrella, and a general concern about sidewalk clutter. The town's existing patio policy requires umbrellas of this nature to be wholly contained within a fenced area. The intention of the policy requirement is to minimize the risk of inadvertent collision to, of the passerby and to help provide a means of securing them both during and after business hours. Given the commitments of the participating merchants to provide a similar le level of oversight for these units, it appears the intent of the policy will be complied with, notwithstanding that they don't meet the fencing requirements as proposed. The umbrella and base units will be removed daily so they will not remain on the street after normal business hours, thus further minimizing the risk of vandalism or damage. As well, the height of the units they have purchased is such that the risk of injury through a pedestrian collision is minimal, although that, although that risk and resultant liability to the town does still exist. The planning consultant retained by the town to undertake the South Andman Streetscape Plan conceptually supports broadening the existing patio policy to increase opportunities for similar initiatives to occur where they can be undertaken in a safe manner. 
To be successful, this venture requires the continuing cooperation of the BIA membership. The town will monitor the success of the bench placement and the deployment of the umbrellas if the requested policy exemption is approved by council to ensure that the risk to the public is minimized in the manner described in the report above, Mr. Mayor. And there's no direct financial implications to the town in this respect. So staff are recommending that an exemption be considered. Thank you. Then the recommendation is that council supports an exemption to the patio policy requiring that umbrellas be wholly contained in an enclosed area in order that the BIA may be permitted to place street furniture comprised of benches with an integrated umbrella unit in the downtown core of Port Elgin. Comments, questions? Councilor Huber. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Larry, I just uh, <clears throat> wonder if you could clarify what, um, and maybe you don't know, but what was meant when you have a comment in here that the, the benches um, were to be as horizontal as possible? Uh, is that, uh, what does that mean? The seating area of the bench it should be horizontal, so it's easier for people who have difficulty getting in and out of chairs to to get out. So, okay. so the fact that they're reclined at the back makes it difficult for people to get out in some okay. circumstances. Um, there, what I thought it might have meant was, because um, there's also a comment in here that they're, um, I think, going to be positioned against buildings. Is that sort of the intention? I, I, they will be placed as close to the building as possible. If the umbrellas proceed, they will have to come out they a little bit because of the diameter of the umbrella unit itself. Um, I just, um, on Sunday when I drove through downtown Port Elgin, I noticed, um, you know, they, they look nice on the street, but um, a lot of them were on angles, and um, it, it was, you, you could see people having difficulty getting around them. Yes. And um, there were um, some... There was one at the corner, at the stoplight corner in front of uh, Pharma Plus um, that was actually um, very close to the to the corner. So um, just, you know, it, it would be nice um, when, you know, they're out there for real that, you know, that gets paid attention to. I also just want to, um, we have made a comment to Spruce the Bruce that, because um, there's been a couple of items this um, recently where funding has been given for elements that... Um, have something to do with the town, but we're kind of getting them after the fact. Has, comments, has a comment been made to Spruce the Bruce that um, it would be a good idea to get some buy-in as the process is unfolding rather than after funding has been allocated and materials already purchased? Through you, Mr. Mayor, that was a long subject of conversation at our at the uh, downtown revitalization committee meeting before the last one, and we had hoped we'd made some progress in that respect. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Question, a couple questions, Larry. Um, are those the final locations for all the chairs that we see out there, uh, number one? And uh, have we had any negative comments about the chairs from the public? I don't believe those are the final locations because there are three proposed for Coulter Parkette, and the one that was just spoken to about the pharmacy, I believe, should be relocated around the corner on Green Street at some point. But as my report says, it's going to require the continuing cooperation of the BIA to see that it gets put in the right spot. And in terms of uh, comments, um, no specific negative comments that I've received yet. Okay. Um, w once the final positions are established, can you send that out to us? Or? Yeah, yes, there's actually a map that accompanied the request a few weeks ago, and, and we can circulate that. Sounds good. Other comments, questions? All in favor of the recommendation? That's carried. Uh, the next item on the agenda is uh, Environmental Services and Transportation Staff Report, and it has to do with High and Grosvenor Street tri uh, Trial Program, and again, our CAA will, will present. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Doyle is absent tonight, so he's entrusted me to uh, communicate all the technical things necessary here. So as uh, part of the South Hampton Streetscape planning process, staff and the town's consultant are considering options to improve various locations in the downtown core for its users. One particular area of interest that has been identified by residents is the intersection of High and Grosvenor for its difficult north and south pedestrian crossing. In an effort to develop practical solutions for that intersection, the, the consultant has developed a temporary bump-out plan which is, which is attached to the staff report that can be implemented at the intersection on a trial basis. This plan includes a painted and delineated bump out that extends to the limit of the current parking lane and significantly reduces travel distance for pedestrians crossing High Street. 
The walking distance for pedestrians will be reduced from about 20 meters to 10, and the bump-out area will also permit pedestrians to have an improved sight line from a protected area. The installation of the bump-outs may require the removal of one parking spot on High Street and some realignment of the spaces on Grosvenor. Town staff, if the uh, report is approved, will monitor the bump out and the feedback from residents. This information will be used to evaluate the merits of the treatment and aid with future recommendations. Staff has received support from the layout from the, uh, from the downtown merchants group to local businesses on the affected corner, and we've also advised those on the downtown revitalization committee and the uh, proposed future Southampton BIA. We've only received positive feedback from those groups we have communicated with. The installation of the temporary measures will be a relatively minor project that we can do mostly internally. So in terms of finances, uh, there are some residual funds uh, in the capital account for the Southampton Streetscape Plan, which uh, we believe can be used for this uh, project. There's about $14,000 there, and this would uh, consume about $6,500. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, and the recommendation is that Council authorize the installation of a trial bump-out design in Southampton at the intersection of High and Grover. Comments, questions? Councilor Gold, I'm over here. Larry, how many parking spaces are we going to lose with the trial? One. Just one? In front of uh, the C Walker House? CIBC, I believe. Yeah. See, the, the way the picture looks, it looks like there will be some in front of the Walker House as well, but it doesn't no. actually take any parking spaces. No. Thank you. Councilor Hubert. Um, my question was also about parking, and, and um, I, I, again, my reading of the drawing, there's more than one going to disappear, and um, I, I just really want to confirm that because um, in front of CIBC, it's, it's um, handicap parking, and the one that's the furthest um, or the closest to that intersection by the post office is also a handicap spot. You're telling me that that one's not being affected? It looks like it is in the drawing. Mr. Doyle's committed no handicap spots will be affected. Okay, and, and the bollards that would be put in place will not impact anybody, you know, using those, those spots that are abutting right up against this? Correct. Okay. Um, I just also, um, you know, we do have a bump out already in Southampton, as I, I mentioned to you earlier, Larry. If you look at what's at the entrance to Ferry Lake, there is one right on that corner. So, you know, we, we have some experience with this, and, it, it, you know, I hope the experiment works. Um, and uh, do you have any sense of when it will actually be implemented? I understand that the material will take about three weeks to acquire, so, so we're hoping it will be in place as early as August as we can manage. Councilor Schoenroth. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm certainly in favor of trying this, um, and, I, and when I looked at the first map, and I pictured myself driving on Grosner Street, I asked why, or what, what things would be in place to make that crossing actually better for the traffic flowing north and south. I think the traffic that's going east and west, I think that's a great improvement. But I'm still concerned about that one, the other corner, if you want to call it that, Grosvenor Street. Because when I looked at the stop sign and the pedestrian crossing actually isn't changing much, I envisioned myself in my car trying to turn right down to the flag. And I just can't picture myself seeing that corner much better. So I'm glad to hear that there's some safety concerns being addressed. But uh, and I'm not disagreeing with with the trial, but I really think we should reconsider where the bump out or not the bump out, but the crossing of pedestrians takes place when you're heading east and west. I I, I struggle with that, but I'm prepared to uh, support the recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Charbonneau. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I think uh, I mean, it's clear that there are still some unanswered questions, and that's why it's. Uh, a good idea to do this trial. I think I just wanted to make the comment that uh, at the table that I was sitting at, the Southampton Streetscape uh, meeting, and I, I know a number of you were also there, this intersection and the concept of doing a bump out there was 
something that was really supported. I mean, everybody really wanted to see something done at this intersection and see an improvement made for pedestrian crossing at this intersection. So I'm really excited to see uh, that uh, staff has, has picked that up so quickly without even waiting for the streetscape plan or, or, or any report. And, and, you know, we've had an interesting and, and a pretty productive relationship with this consultant on a couple of things uh, sort of that we're working on in tandem with the streetscape plan. Uh, so it's, I, you know, that whole process is working really well and it's starting to generate uh, practical solutions to some problems that that real people on the ground actually have in Southampton and concerns that they really have uh, about parts of that streetscape. So I just really wanted to say uh, um, thank you to staff for, for picking that up so quickly and, and, and seizing it and, and deciding to implement something and uh, um, it's going to be good to see parts of what people are talking about start to appear down there uh, just as soon as possible. So um, really well done and I'm looking forward to uh, seeing hearing the results of of this, will Larry? Maybe a question quickly. Will there, um, does staff intend to report back to council at some point about this uh, with regard to how it's working, or to to, uh, to make it permanent? If if it works, to make it permanent, or if it doesn't, to alter it. I mean, I assume we'll be hearing about it. And sort yes. of in what time frame will you be? Will staff be using to assess the trial? How long will it be a trial? I guess is the question. Um, I, I hope we can actually get in place so we can observe very carefully what happens during the, the peak times of the year. I, I, think, uh, I think the timing for the final report is such that we can get some input into it so that when Council sees the final report in the fall, there will be some recommendations about whether this is actually working or what variation to it do we need to make it more successful. That would be ideal. Sorry, Mr. Mayor, that would, that would be ideal if, if we could have some data to back up and put, actually maybe put something more permanent in the long-term plan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Anything further? Councillor Seaman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, a couple questions. Um, the Ballards, are they like a polymer product here? They're not steel. Correct. So if a bicycle bounces into them, they do bend and swing back and forth. Uh, the other question, the turn, turning radius. Uh, trucks coming down High Street, turning right or north or south on Grosvenor. They're, this is going to impede their ability to get around the corner. So I believe the paved width of uh, High Street is still sufficient that the, the that it does work. Okay, thank you. And one more comment, uh, Councillor Sheldroth, same point. Um, where you look, where you have to stop, yes. going north or south, uh, you can't see what's coming there. So you actually got to sneak all the way out to the front of High Street to see what's coming up and down. So where it is right now isn't going to work. So I, 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 I've made a note. Yeah, thank you. That's it, Mr. Mayor. Councillor go. Councillor Seaman, I, I think the intent there is obviously that the uh, sidewalks aren't moving and the pedestrians are accustomed to coming and crossing at that particular point, and it would be hazardous to move the stop sign up and have somebody walk out in front of a car, I think, and that's probably the intent of leaving it, leaving it like this. Just a thought. Thank you. Anything further? All in favor. That's carried. So the next item on the agenda then is a uh, planning and development staff report and it has to do with the Harvey's Swiss Valley site plan and our director of, uh, uh, Bart will present, Ma sorry, manager of development. I'll get that right, Bart. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. 224615 Ontario Inc. owns the land on which the Dollar Tree is located. The lands were the location of the former Canadian Tire Store and Gas Bar. The proposed restaurant is to be located at the same location as the former gas bar. The owner is proposing to construct a 279 square meter restaurant. Site improvements include enhancement of landscaping and building design consistent with the town's design guidelines. Outstanding issues include the provision of securities prior to the execution of the agreement, improvements for stormwater management, and the addition of landscape enhancements on the northern perimeter of the site and around the drive through Development also is subject to appeals provisions of the Committee Adjustment Decision permitting landscape open space to be 21%. The zoning bylaw requires 30. The appeal period ends July 24, 2014. It is recommended that the Council proceed with the compelling, <laughs> compelling site plan agreement once all the remaining issues have been addressed and the appeal period has lapsed without any appeals being submitted. Thank you, Bart. Uh, 
the recommendation is that Council pass a bylaw to authorize a site plan agreement with 224615 Ontario Inc. for a new restaurant once the outstanding issues are addressed by the owner. Any questions or comments? All in favor of the recommendation. That's carried. Uh, and another one for Bart. Uh, I better wait. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Home Hardware has acquired land to the just north and south. Just hang on a second, Bart. Oh, sorry. Marcel? Sorry, I, my record didn't reflect that he cleared on both. Oh, did he? Oh, okay. Sorry. sorry. So go ahead then. Yep. Yep. Home Hardware has acquired lands to the north and south of its existing store location in order to accommodate a proposed expansion. The owner is proposing to construct a 930 square meter retail store expansion, a 576 square meter expansion to the lumber storage building, and a 5,831 square meter open storage for building supplies. Site improvements include enhancing landscapes consistent with the town's design guidelines. Comments from the neighbors indicate concern with landscape buffering, noise from activity, existing activity, and odor from existing activity. The noise concerns neighbors indicate trucks littering building supplies are noisy. The owner has proposed to relocate the existing unloading areas away from the residential properties to the west. This should improve conditions. Odor. Similarly, the odors from diesel truck operation can be a nuisance to the existing residents. In proposing to relocate the existing unloading areas away from residential properties, odors issues should be reduced. Buffering. Landscape buffering along the boundary with the residential properties can be enhanced further. In addition to the proposed fence, a three meter grass strip, additional improvements to screening may be made. Outstanding issues include improvements of stormwater management and additional landscape enhancements. The development is also subject to the appeal provision of the Committee of Adjustment decision permitting landscape open space to be 15%. The bylaw requires 30. The appeal period ends July 24, 2014. It is recommended that the town sorry, it is recommended that the town proceed with the compelling site plan agreement and once all remaining issues have been addressed and the appeal period has lapsed without any appeals being submitted. Thank you, Bert. Uh, then the recommendation is that Council pass a bylaw to authorize a site plan agreement with Home Hardware Stores Limited for a retail store expansion and a lumberyard expansion once the outstanding issues are addressed by the owner. Any questions or comments to this one? None. Then all in favor of the recommendation. That's great. This thing's not working. It's right now from you. This, thing, this thing's right now, so I just, I just need the recommendation when he's done for the next report, the centennial. Cool. I'll sit there after I read it. Okay. That's fine. Uh, the next item on Janet's Community Services Parks and Recreation Report uh, it is a staff report to do with the Centennial Pool Tank Repairs. And Larry's going to present. Again, our director is away this evening, so I get double duty. Um, Mr. Mayor, Council approved $150,000 for the capital project as part of the uh, 2014 budget. In moving forward, staff investigated various options for the tank repairs best suited for the facility and has recommended a fiberglass coating liner application be approved. Three methods were investigated and, and uh, as noted, this one seems to be the, the best one in staff's opinion. And in doing the evaluation that they looked at price, warranty, time frame for the application, the shutdown required and the life expectancy. The evaluation indicated that fiberglass liner application was the best suited option and then they began work on the uh, companies that could undertake this type of exercise. Staff contacted 10 commercial pool companies and Water Main Canada is the only company available in Canada to install this application. As part of the evaluation, staff took trips to other facilities where this type of repair has occurred to assess the product itself, the quality of the work and durability. As a result of uh, substantial water loss within the pool basin earlier this spring, staff contacted two, sorry, contacted two companies to investigate and report on possible causes. Canadian leak detection was engaged to investigate the skimmers, drains, supply and return lines. Their comprehensive testing and subsequent report indicated that all six skimmers require replacement and that that should take place prior to the coating installation. We note that there were two temporary fixes completed at the time of their inspection and water loss stopped immediately thereafter. 
Staff recommends this firm be engaged to complete the permanent repairs. Uh, therefore, Mr. Mayor, staff is requesting the Council approve two single-source contracts. One, the, the skimmer replacements to Canadian leak detection for, for $32,000, and there's a time frame for them to be in work later this month. And then the fiberglass coating to Watermade Canada for 82458 and that would start September the 8th. Uh, both uh, 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 representatives from both firms have, in fact, uh, been at the pool and are comfortable with the time frame for the project and they have completed our requirements and are on our contractor list. And as noted, the total is 117858 and we remain under budget at this point. Thank you. Uh, the recommendation is that Council authorizes staff to single source the replacement of the six skimmers at the Centennial Pool to Canadian leak detection at a cost of 32000 And further, that staff single source the fiberglass liner application for the pool shell to Water Made Canada, Inc., at a cost of $82,458. Questions, comments? Councillor Shulra. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just to confirm then, the uh, first work's gonna be August 25th, and the second job is gonna be completed about September the 22nd. So we're looking at what, four weeks? Are we looking at a week ahead of that and a week behind that? So for a total of six, perhaps, that'll affect pool programs? Uh, I believe we need to close the pool early to drain and do some preparatory work. The, the tile that's in there has to come out first, so I believe there's a week shutdown before this starts. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Sherman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Larry, could you just um, clarify for me, because it's not real clear to me from the report, the reason for the single sourcing. Uh, why is it... Uh, I don't understand, are, are, these the, are these the only firms that can provide these services that you can find, or are they, or is it just that they've done work satisfactorily on previous projects? That's, that's how it reads to me, and I just wonder, could you, could you do a little bit more to justify the single sourcing to me? Uh, uh, three, Mr. Mayor, both, uh, sorry. Canadian Leak Detection was the firm that we engaged to do the loss of water so they understand exactly what they're doing and they have the resources to be able to do it within the time frame so they did the report they did the temporary repairs on the skimmers they did the scope testing of all the other pipes and so on so i think staff are comfortable that they already have a good understanding of what's got to happen there so i imagine there are other firms that could do the skimmer replacement that's not staff's suggestion in terms of the fiberglass application as noted i think this was the only one in canada that we could find to do that okay okay thank you mr mayor other questions comments and all in favor of the recommendation that's carried that's the end of our agenda so there's a number of items there for committee's information and uh we'll go for good of council starting with council cross i got two copies of it all all right thank you mr mayor uh let's see uh, it's been a while since we were in here, and we did the uh, staff appreciation barbecue, and uh, there was a number of uh, us there, and a lot of staff to feed, and it was it was a good day. It was a little bit in the warm side, but I managed to feed half, and uh, Stu managed to feed half, and we got everybody looked after there. Uh, July 5th, I was at the Beechers in, uh, in Goebbels, and it was uh, actually one of the better days we've ever had out there uh, for their AGM. Uh, the weather was perfect, good breeze coming in off the lake, and uh, we covered the topics and piping plovers and uh, a few concerns. Dan Rivet was there to uh, to give the uh, police perspective and, and some assurances were required and to give his same old answer about uh, PWCs on the water, and he has no jurisdiction on that water. Uh, but it was, a, it was a good time, and that was enjoyed. And the last thing I have is uh, Southampton's Rotary Golf Tournament. I uh, attended that this year. I missed last year's and uh, went for this one, and they've uh, raised some more good funds for the uh, for the hospital, and uh, it was not a good outing. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thanks, Tom. Councillor Hewer. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I noticed that um, the Heritage Committee minutes are, are in the package. I would encourage all of you to take a look at it. Um, the Resurrected Heritage Committee is, is a very um, vibrant group of people. We're, we're smaller in number than we used to be. We've got space for more members. And um, we've been going out and visiting sites and, and um, talking, talking, talking. And it's, it's just a, a very lively committee. And um, 
um, good things are to, are, are to come um, in the future from it. I do want to mention that we'll have, the Heritage Committee will have a table at the Marine Heritage Festival coming up on Saturday the 26th and Sunday the 27th in Southampton. And um, I don't know if any of you are going to have cardboard boat races, but um, uh, we're going to have some fun stuff at the Heritage Committee booth. Um, I also um, just wanted to comment that um, it's nice to see the construction on Huron Street and Sogging Street or Clarendon, whatever you, you want to call it over there by the, by the harbor, almost finished. Um, it, it was a nice project, and it's, it's, it's clipped along. I know the residents there are quite happy to not have the vibrations anymore, so uh, it'll be nice when it gets finished. I um, was at the opening of the Fairy Lake Pavilion, as were a number of people around the room. Um, Luke, uh, the deputy mayor, did an admirable job of count cutting the ribbon, um, nice facility, and um, already um, you can see that it's, it's serving its purpose well. Um, we had a great little book sale, the Friends of the Southampton Library, I'll just comment on that too. Um, we moved to the boathouse this year, and um, Southampton is a great town, lots of people donate books, and lots of people buy books, and uh, it was a record-breaking year for our sales, and um, I took some books out on the street, um, a little sort of our version of a pop-up sale. Thank you to the town for letting us put some tables in front of the plywood in front of uh, Mr. Burke's development, the former Rexall building. Um, interesting to be on the street talking to tourists and, um, you know, if, if you have a chance to just hang out, um, and I know some of you do for various reasons. Um, you know, the bikers were there from Michigan, um, buying hardcover books. I don't know where you stick stuff on a bike. Maybe Councilor Lego can <laughs> help me out with that. But, um, and there were people from Southampton, England, who were actually in Owen Sound, and there was nothing to do in Owen Sound, so they thought, Southampton, let's go to Southampton. It, it was cool on the street. So um, thank you for the town for, for enabling that. I also um, attended on Saturday the Southampton Residents Association Annual General Meeting just sat at the back and um, they've got a new board and um, they're talking about moving forward so it'll be interesting to see. Um, uh, they're planning an all candidates meeting in August and um, you know they have some interest in um, highway development and things like that and, and so it, it, I think um, it'll be interesting to see what they have to say in the future. Thank you Mr. Mayor. Thank you Councilor Shilla. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just again for the Fairy Lake Pavilion, thank you again to Bud Halpin and his SDSS students. They're great work. Uh, that's their second project, of course. The River Street Station is the other one. So if they can continue to do work like that, uh, it, it's contributing to, to the town. Finally, thank you to uh, Duncan Hawthorne and Bruce Power. The weather cooperated. Great night. It was amazing to see all those families in town. I don't know where all those little kids but I don't miss the screaming. I'm past that now. Uh, finally, my uh, last and, and favorite event that's coming up this week is the Antique Show and Sale here at the Plex, and it's this Friday and Saturday. Great event for those that are into antiques, and I'm looking forward to uh, going into that show again. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thanks, Ed. Vice Deputy Mayor Gallimont. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Uh, it's been a, been a busy uh, time uh, this last three weeks. Uh, I got to go fishing in the uh, Lake Erin uh, or Chantry Chinook uh, uh, press kickoff and I uh, didn't catch any fish but a great ride and uh, I want to thank Bert and the guys for uh, donating the, the gas. I, I know it's not cheap to run those boats and uh, it was, Dan Rivet and I uh, had a good conversation but we didn't catch any fish so uh, had a good time. Fireworks were great, fire games were awesome, uh, the golf, uh, the rotary golf, uh, Tom's getting better every time we golf, so I'm looking forward to golfing with them again sometime in the future. Staff barbecue was good. What I wanted to tell you about is uh, the Jeff Preston. Jeff Preston is this Friday, our uh, Rotary uh, Tournament uh, here in Port Elgin, and there's still room for foursome, so if anyone is, has a notion that they'd like to golf, uh, contact Sugging Golf Course and you can sign up. And uh, the night before on Thursday at the golf course is our thank you to all of our supporters, our community supporters. And uh, it's a wine and cheese, and the Peely Island donates the wine, so it's a pretty good deal. And uh, there's a silent auction, so the deal is bring your money and uh, support uh, all those projects that uh, Rotary supports. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Thanks, Doug. Councilor Brown. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I was also at the uh, Fairy Lake Grand Opening. Still can't get over that place. It's, I think it's just fantastic. And uh, I think our community should be proud of it. I was at the uh, golf 
uh, Rotary Golf. It was nice to be part of that because of what they do for the community and other than that, everything else was said. Thank you. Councilor Uh Pretty well everything's been said. Uh, just did. I was at the Port Dogan Saugine Beachers as well, uh, general annual meeting, and what a wonderful bunch of people to work with. They very easy to work with uh, this community, and they're a pleasure. Uh, Southampton Rotary Club Golf Tournament, always a pleasure to go to that. Uh, great funds to the hospital, and happy to be there and contribute. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thanks, Ed. Councilor Lebo. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I was at the uh, Beecher's Association's meeting as well, and a uh, great group of people, and it's nice to see that uh, it's under uh, new leadership, and they'll carry on uh, with that, uh, that association. Um, I also had the opportunity to drop by the uh, the beer store on Saturday, and uh, two uh, young athletes that are uh, trying to raise money to go to France to compete in the uh, the uh, life-saving uh, event that's taking place there, Dan Wilston and Ashton, or, um, sorry, Madison Ashton. Uh, so they had a bottle drive at the uh, the beer store, and uh, I have their phone numbers here, and I invited them to, to do a deputation at council. So hopefully they'll contact Linda for the next council meeting and uh, bring their uh, their comments to council and tell us what they're doing. Thanks. Thanks, Marcel. Deputy Mayor Chavano. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, lots of the stuff that uh, I do has already been mentioned, So, uh, but I, um, I appreciate the opportunity to... Uh, uh, participate and speak in speaking uh, both the the, uh, the um, AGM and the uh, um, Ferry Lake Pavilion opening. Uh, sometimes the mayor goes away and lets me have some fun, and I appreciated that. The um, uh, and uh, the other thing I wanted to mention was the uh, Port Elgin and Southampton uh, toolkits uh, for the branding um, exercise that we're going through are have um, completed uh, what we think are likely. Final revisions are now going back to the stakeholder groups and being looked at again and checked and cross-checked, and uh, they'll be coming back to DRAC later this month. And uh, if uh, they are approved at DRAC, you'll likely be seeing them uh, here very shortly thereafter, possibly in August. So, um, so just for your information, that uh, that work uh, continues to proceed and is going well, I think, and um, hopefully it will bear fruit shortly. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thanks, Luke. I, I just thank you for. Uh for filling in for me. I did have uh, an enjoyable week on vacation with my family, so uh, it was quite nice. Uh, I have nothing else, but I just, before we adjourn, Marcel, uh, you declared a clan conflict, and we just need to know for the minutes the general nature, just in a general way, what the conflict is with those items. Okay. Obviously, on the franchise for the Harvey Swish LA. Okay. There's a second item. Yeah. Um, Peter and Jill Goche have been friends of ours for quite some time, and uh, there's been some issues over the site plan. I felt it uh, necessary not to participate. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Marcel. I didn't mean to put you on the spot. I just forgot it earlier. Motion to adjourn. Doug and Fred, all in favor? Great. Okay.